All right, algebra one, here we go. Moving on. Um, nope, this is algebra two. Four, four, factoring quadratic expressions. Uh, our essential question is, how is factoring related to the distributive property? It's the opposite of it, basically. Uh, if you were to take two times x plus two, you would distribute. Well, now we're gonna take that uh, two x squared plus two, and, and now we wanna be able to uh, factor it out. Okay, I guess to get started here, we should define a factor. What is a factor? A factor is one of the numbers or terms you multiply to equal a product. Two times three equals six. Two and three are factors. Okay, the sixth is a product. Uh, for example, here, 2a equals 18. Two and a are factors, whereas 18 is the product. Okay, so we're going to look at... Uh, how do you find these factors? Okay, we're going to look at trinomials, then we're going to look at greatest common factors, difference of two squares, those kind of things. Um, we're going to start off with finding the factors of a trinomial with a equal to 1 or a equal to negative 1. And remember, a is still that same thing here, a, b, and c. That doesn't change. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, to factor x squared plus 9x plus 20, I'm going to go through a couple of steps here. Okay, and use these steps here because this can get a little confusing sometimes but try to think in terms of this okay when a is 1 the first thing we want to do is split the x squared up so we're going to get x and x notice the two sets of parentheses okay when you factor a trinomial you're going to get two binomials two terms you're going to get two terms here two terms here and we would foil to get the answer you know what foil is you've seen it before but the first thing we want to do is take that x squared and split them up and put them in the first two spots. Okay, first and foremost, do that every time. If they're T's, I don't care what the letter is, split them up. Okay? Now, the next thing you want to do is put the signs in the parentheses. Okay? Well, here's something you want to make sure you have this, have it handy, because this holds all the time also. If you're going to factor a trinomial where it has a plus plus, then you're always going to get a plus plus in your parentheses every time. Okay, I don't care what the numbers are. What, if you have a plus plus, you're going to get a plus plus. If you get a minus plus, you're always going to get a minus minus. And as we work through some of these examples, you'll, you'll start to see why that is. But just know for now, that's what it is. If your C term, if your constant term is, is a minus, okay, then you're always going to get a plus minus or minus plus. It's the same thing. Okay. Irregardless of what you get here, if this is a minus minus, or if these are minuses, you're going to get a plus minus. Okay? That holds every time. So when you look at our example, because we had a plus plus, we're now going to get x plus x plus. Okay? So the third step is, well, what in the world goes in those last two blanks? Okay? So to fill in the blanks, what you're doing is this. You want to find the factors of your C term. Okay? Whatever that was. For us, it was 20. Okay? And you want to take factors of that. So what times what gives me, in this case, 20. But because it's a plus 20, I want to be able, be able to add them up and equal my B term. The 9 in this case. Okay? Uh, if the C was negative, if that was minus 20, then I would find those factors that I could subtract and equal the B term. Okay? But for now, I've got a plus plus, so it's plus plus. So I take factors of my 20, 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 times 5. Remember, factors are numbers you multiply together. So I want to be able to multiply them together, but if I added them, because it's plus 20, I would get 9. Well, that's 21, that's 12, that's 9. So I'm going to put 4 and 5. You can put 5 and 4, it doesn't matter. I just usually put the smaller first. So x plus 4 times x plus 5 equals that. If you foil this, x squared plus 5x plus 4x is plus 9x when you add like terms together. And then there's your plus 20. Okay, works like that all the time. We're going to spend a little bit of time doing this, okay? It tends to be something that's a little harder for you guys, so we'll spend a little bit more time on it. But you got to be able to do this, okay? Got to be able to factor, that's huge, okay? So, step th three steps. Split the x's up, put your signs in, and then fill in the blanks here. Take factors of your C term that either add up or subtract 
depending on what you got here on the sign for C, and that's got to equal your B term. Okay? Uh, what if you have A is negative 1? If A is negative 1, just factor it out. Okay, just factor out negative 1. So you're just going to end up changing the sign on everything. And then you would do what we just said. Do the same thing. Just carry the negative 1 out front. Okay? Greatest common factor, you've seen that before. When you look uh, at all your terms, if there's something that is the same in each that you can factor out, then factor it out. Like 6 and 9, I know that 3 goes into both of them. And they both have at least an n. If they each have at least an n, take the smallest exponent n. In this case, it's n to the first power. So 3n is our common, greatest common factor. And then what would you multiply it by to get this? Okay? An easy way to think of it is, if you can figure out the greatest common factor, just divide it back into both of them, like that. 3 goes into 6 twice. 2 minus 1 is 1n, so you get 2n. 3 goes into th uh, 9 three times. The n's cancel. 2n plus 3. That's what's going to go in the parentheses. Okay? 4 goes into 4 and 8. Uh, you got an A and an A. You got an A, a squared, so that's going to be your uh, greatest common uh, factor. Divide the 4A squared into both of them. Uh, you'll be left with A here and 2 here. Okay? You can see it. The 4s cancel out. Take 2 out there. Take 2 out there. You're left with A to the first power. Same thing with the uh, minus 8A squared. Three terms, same thing. 6 goes into all of them. They don't all have a B, so you can't pull out any more. Divide 6 back into all three of them, that's what you get. And then the last thing is the difference of two squares. Okay? If you get two perfect squares and you're subtracting them, that's the difference of two squares, you take their square roots, and then it's A plus B, A minus B, where A and B are their respective square roots. So X squared minus 9, they're both perfect squares. The square root of X squared is X, boom, boom. The square root of 9 is 3, boom, boom, and you'll always get plus minus, always. The square root is 4t, the square root is 5, 4t plus 5, 4t minus 5. The square root is 2x, the square root is 3y, 2x plus 3y, 2x minus 3y. Okay, that's how it works all the time. We're going to look at a lot of examples over the, uh, of this stuff over the next couple of days. Look at some application of it. Uh, make sure you get these notes down. Look at it again if you have to, because um, if you get this and the rest of it, uh, you'll understand a lot better. Uh, but you got to get this basic stuff down here. Trinomials, three steps, and then you got two special cases here. Greatest common factor and the difference of two squares. All right, we'll see you in class tomorrow. We'll get after it then.